Whoa, watch your head. Some seriously big asteroids are crashing into Earth. What kind of shapes and sizes do they have? Which ones would have the deadliest impact? And which one would be most likely to hit us? Uh-oh, get your bunker ready. This is What If, and here's what would happen if the largest asteroid hit Earth. Okay, let's get the terminology out of the way. I say asteroids, but some of the objects on our list are not asteroids. They're comets. Both asteroids and comets are objects in our solar system, but they aren't the same. Asteroids are rocky leftovers from the early formation of our planetary neighborhood. And of the over one million that we know of, most orbit the Sun in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. On the other hand, comets are snowballs made of frozen gases, rock, and dust. They orbit the Sun, and when they get too close, they start to melt. This releases a giant cloud of dust and gas that can be larger than most planets. With 3,000 known comets in the solar system, could a few be ready to turn the Earth into a giant cloud of dust too? Chelyabinsk Meteorite Let's start with a smaller object that has already hit our planet. Meet the Chelyabinsk meteorite. It exploded over Russia in February of 2013. With a diameter of about 17 meters, it was relatively small, but the impact was huge. The explosion had the energetic equivalent of 500,000 tons of TNT. That's about 30 times as powerful as the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. It injured 1,200 people and caused enormous property damage. Pretty big effects from a little extraterrestrial visitor. Chicks Loop. Moving on to something bigger, we'll go 65 million years into the past. The massive Chicks Loop asteroid was likely one of the forces that resulted in the mass extinction of the dinosaurs. It was about 10 to 15 kilometers wide, and its impact crater in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula measures 180 kilometers wide and 900 meters deep. Whoa! When this asteroid slammed into Earth, it devastated everything nearby. The blast wave sent enormous amounts of rocky material into the atmosphere, and it caused tsunamis as high as 1,500 meters. While all the soot didn't completely block out the sun, it reduced the amount of sunlight reaching the surface of our planet. That seriously devastated plant growth and had rippling consequences on the food chain. Eventually, it caused entire ecosystems to collapse. Oumuamua. Of all the objects that could collide with us, Oumuamua has one of the more interesting shapes. This rocky, cigar-shaped object is about 400 meters in length. NASA classifies it as a comet, but it exhibits traits of an asteroid, too. And it doesn't have an attachment to any star system, so we don't know where in space it originates from. In 2017, it passed by the Earth at a distance of 41 million kilometers. Now, while we were safe from impact on that occasion, it could have resulted in a lot of destruction. If this interstellar guest crashed into Earth, darkness would cover our planet. And if the dust and debris stayed in our atmosphere for a long time, it would kill many plants, animals, and humans that depend on the sun. Bennu Bennu is not only an asteroid you should worry about, 
It's the asteroid you should worry about. It has a 1 in 1700 chance of colliding with Earth in September of the year 2182. At only half a kilometer wide, it's relatively small, but remember how significant the Chelyabinsk impact was? Yeah, with that in mind, you might be a little nervous when it makes a close approach to Earth every six years. Shoemaker-Levy 9 This next comet doesn't have any chance of hitting Earth. That's because it already collided with Jupiter in 1994. But you could imagine the destruction this one and a half to two kilometer wide comet would have caused on our home turf. It broke into 20 pieces as a result of Jupiter's gravity. The collisions from these fragments were so powerful that they were similar to the detonations of about 300 million atomic bombs. Plumes of debris shot as high as 2,000 to 3,000 kilometers. And the atmosphere heated to scorching temperatures of 30,000 to 40,000 degrees. You must be pretty relieved that Shoemaker-Levy 9 never hit us. Ceres Last but far from the least is an asteroid so big it's technically classified as a dwarf planet. Ceres is the largest object in the asteroid belt. It makes up 25% of the belt's total mass. The radius of Ceres is 476 kilometers. That makes it over 60 times larger than our ancient friend Chicxulub. If Ceres collided with Earth, there wouldn't just be devastation. There would be no Earth. The size of Ceres alone would block out the Sun as it approached. And then, the impact would remove 10 kilometers of the Earth's crust. Hypersonic shockwaves would ripple across the globe. Everything in its path would be incinerated and leveled. Nothing would stand a chance of surviving. Our planet would essentially turn into a glowing ball of fire and melted rock. If by some miracle or secret underground bunker you survived, well, you wouldn't last long. Soot in the atmosphere would result in something like a nuclear winter. What would happen if you somehow had space bending abilities and decided to test them out by placing the Earth between the two asteroid belts in our solar system? Well, the short answer is you might be asking for a little dose of planetary extinction. Would Earthlings be forced to give up on celestial travel? How long before one of these belts asteroids is headed our way? And how big a space rock could we collide with? This is what if, and here's what would happen if Earth was sandwiched between two asteroid belts. Our solar system has two asteroid belts. Closest to us is the main asteroid belt. Located between Mars and Jupiter, its asteroids are primarily made of rock and stone. It's estimated that 16 of them have a diameter greater than 240 kilometers. The largest object in the belt is the dwarf planet Ceres. Uh, more on how this factors into the big picture later. All the way in the back, beyond Neptune, lies the Kuiper Belt a region filled with icy leftovers from the early days of the solar system, some with a diameter of 100 kilometers or more. Among them lives another dwarf planet. Maybe you've heard of it, Pluto. So what would Earth's fate be surrounded by not one, but two asteroid belts? To understand the scale of this scenario, you first need to know what an astronomical unit is. 
Well, one astronomical unit, or AU, is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. The Kuiper Belt is 25 AU wide. Compare that to the main asteroid belt, which is only one AU. Seems pretty sparse. Okay, well, let's say you left their sizes as is and transported them next to Earth. The inner edge of the Kuiper Belt would be between Mars and us. The main asteroid belt's outer edge would be situated between Earth and Venus. The main asteroid belt, although the smaller of the two, would still extend itself over the Sun. Venus and Mercury would now orbit among its millions of rocky bodies. The Kuiper Belt on the other side would go even further. You'd find it draping itself over Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Only Neptune would be left outside of the party. Though not by much. Now, how would this new arrangement look on a starry night? Well, uh, quite unexciting, I'm afraid. Well, think of it this way. Pluto, the dwarf planet inside the Kuiper Belt, would now orbit at about 3 AU from us, just shy of our current distance from Jupiter. Jupiter is an enormous gas planet, but is no more than a bright star to the naked eye, so what can you expect to see of Pluto, which is only two-thirds the diameter of our moon? Yeah, a whole lot of nothing, really. By this point, you're realizing that you used your powers irresponsibly. After all, it would be crazy to travel to other planets within our solar system now that they're surrounded by millions upon millions of scattered objects. So, would you be stuck on Earth forever? Well, no. There might be millions, even billions of rocks floating too close to our planet now. But luckily for you, asteroid belts aren't that dense. The average distance between objects inside a belt is about 1 million kilometers. So you'd still be able to fulfill your dream of going to Mars one day. That is, unless you squeezed the asteroid belts really tight, the entire main asteroid belt would now fit between Earth and Venus, and the Kuiper belt between Earth and Mars. Sure, we aren't strangers to flying through junk. In 2021 alone, there were about 23,000 pieces of debris larger than a softball orbiting Earth. Only now, we wouldn't be surrounded by pieces left behind by broken satellites. We'd have to deal with substantially larger chunks of all-natural material. The Kuiper Belt alone has hundreds of thousands of objects at least 100 kilometers wide. Think about it, hundreds of thousands of asteroids, each at least 10 times bigger than the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago? And in the main asteroid belt, we'd be facing over a million rocks larger than one kilometer, on top of millions of other small ones. So yeah, there, space travel would be suspended indefinitely. Maybe we could at least use all those asteroids for something helpful. Like iron and nickel mining, right? Well, not so fast. You'd be pretty busy dealing with asteroids bombarding Earth from all directions. Yeah. You heard that right. The gravitational pull from our planet could attract objects from both of the surrounding belts. At the lower end of this mass destruction scale, you'd have smaller asteroids capable of destroying an entire metropolis with the same amount of force as a nuclear bomb. And remember Ceres? The dwarf planet inside the main asteroid belt? Yeah, well, it's almost 100 times larger than the asteroid that led to the mass extinction of the dinosaurs. One tiny cataclysmic bump into Earth and whoops, there goes our planet, along with all life as we know it. So don't play with the solar system. Look out! A burning hot space rock just fell into your living room, destroying all the things you care about. Goodbye, sweet television. How did this meteorite end up here? 
Is it still piping hot and dangerous? And what are the odds this could happen to you? This is What If, and here's what would happen if a meteorite crashed into your home. Many rocky objects orbit our sun, and depending on their size, they could either be larger asteroids or smaller meteoroids. If an asteroid was headed toward Earth, it would probably spell big trouble for you and many others. Meteoroids, on the other hand, enter our atmosphere often. Many burn up upon entry, becoming meteors. These just aren't destined to reach the ground. But plenty of space rocks do complete the long, hot journey to the surface. These are called meteorites. And it's estimated that 44,000 kilograms of them fall to Earth every day. Hopefully, it won't keep you up at night knowing a meteorite could be headed toward you this very second. You are enjoying a quiet night at home, but things are about to get rocky. Far above you, a meteoroid has just entered Earth's atmosphere at a speed of 10 to 70 kilometers per second. It would slam into the particles in our atmosphere, rapidly compressing the air in front of it. This would cause the meteorite to glow and heat up to temperatures as high as 1,650 degrees Celsius. As the rock fell further and further through our atmosphere, the outer layers would start to burn off. Most meteoroids are so small that this burning, known as ablation, is enough to turn them to dust. Only about 500 of these fully intact objects make it to the ground every year. That's less than 5% of all incoming meteoroids, and most end up in the ocean or other unreachable terrains. But with a 1 in 840 million chance, you've won the meteorite jackpot. You'd have a better chance of getting struck by lightning or bitten by a shark or both. The meteorite would come in at a low angle, smashing straight through your bedroom window. You'd wake up to the sound of breaking glass, shocked to discover a charcoal gray rock about the size of your fist snuggled up next to you. You'd recoil and nearly roll out of the bed in total shock. That's when you'd finally become aware of the aching pain in your side. Lifting your shirt, you'd notice a nice big bruise, but you'd be amazed that that's all the harm that it caused. Cautiously, you'd go to touch it, assuming the rock is still piping hot from its atmospheric journey. But you'd be surprised to find that it's barely warm. Well, that's because small, rocky meteorites are pretty bad at conducting heat, so as all the outer layers burn away, the core remains cool. Now confident that you won't get burned, you pick it up to examine it closer. It has some heft, and you'd estimate that it weighs somewhere around 4 kilograms. Whoa, the damage that could have done to your face! Suddenly, you notice a surprising odor filling up your old house, and it's coming from the meteorite. Well, depending on the composition, the rock could smell like tar, wet hay, or your compost. One scientist described the strange smell as similar to the butt end of a cigar or old dirt in a vacuum cleaner. Ugh. Well, now what would you do? You'd be one of the very few people unlucky enough to be hit by a meteorite. A quick internet search would tell you about the Silicaga meteorite. In 1954, a woman in Alabama, Ann Hodges, was struck by a meteorite in her sleep. And just like you, she miraculously walked away with only a bruised hip. But wait a second, this rock that has fallen into your possession could be valuable. Maybe even a beautiful addition to some jewelry. You'd take it to get official certification, and depending on the rarity of its composition, condition of preservation, and aesthetic appeal, it could be worth between 5 cents and 
$1,000 per gram. That would mean your little four kilogram rock could be worth a lot more than a Tesla. Maybe you did hit the jackpot after all. Okay, well, the jackpot kind of hit you. A giant asteroid is heading our way. But no, it won't hit the Earth. This asteroid is about to slam into the moon and crack it right in half. What would it be like to witness this epic collision? Would the moon break clean in two? Or would it shatter into a million pieces? And how could one of those pieces wipe out life here on Earth? This is What If, and here's what would happen if an asteroid cracked the moon in half. Before getting into our scenario, let me tell you about the time long ago when the moon almost exploded. It was a beautiful summer night in England in the year 1178. And one hour after sunset, people witnessed a spectacular phenomenon. A giant flame appeared around the upper part of that evening's crescent moon. And right before their eyes, the moon appeared to split in two before turning black. At least this is how the event was recorded by the local chronicler. As you could probably guess, the moon didn't actually split in half that night. It's possible that what these people saw was a large asteroid slamming into it. But an event like this would have sent massive amounts of lunar material toward Earth. More likely, what they witnessed was a meteorite entering the atmosphere and crossing their line of sight directly in front of the moon. This would have given the illusion of it splitting in two in a fiery fashion. But who needs illusions or questionable historical accounts when we could imagine what would really happen? Just get ready to avoid falling moon rocks. The moon is bombarded by hundreds of asteroids and meteorites every year. And without an atmosphere like we enjoy back on Earth, these objects don't burn up before impact. So even a meteorite as small as 25 centimeters across could have a big impact on the moon. In 2006, one approximately this size slammed into it. From Earth, the impact looked like a flash that lasted only four-tenths of a second. But it created a crater about 14 meters long and three meters deep. Taking things up a notch, a 40-centimeter meteoroid slammed into the moon at a speed of 90,100 kilometers per hour. This was such an intense collision that it caused a flash as bright as some of the stars in the night sky. That means when this happened in 2013, you could look up and see the events unfolding without a telescope. For one whole second, at least. The likeliest contender within our solar system of doing some serious damage to the moon would be Ceres. It's the largest object found in the belt between Jupiter and Mars. While it's technically classified as a dwarf planet, it's still only about a quarter as large as the moon. But even that wouldn't be enough to break the moon in two, or at least to knock it out of its orbit. For that, you'd need an asteroid almost the same size as the moon itself. And if this happened, you'd know it right away. About 1.3 seconds after impact, you'd see the moon being torn apart. Massive amounts of debris would be hurtling toward Earth. Some of this debris could be even larger than the asteroid that caused the mass extinction of the dinosaurs. But before you start picturing the life on Earth wiped out scenario, things might not be as bad as you think. Normally, Earth-bound asteroids travel at speeds faster than 100 kilometers per second. But it would be different for the chunks of the broken moon and the moon-destroying asteroid. These would have much lower speeds and, with that, much less energetic impacts. If you were lucky, the impact from even the most colossal pieces of lunar debris 
would release only 1% of the energy of a similar-sized asteroid. Adding to your luck, you'd get to witness a meteor shower of truly epic proportions as smaller bits of debris would burn up in the atmosphere. And this epic collision wouldn't result in two split halves of the moon now orbiting around Earth. Sadly, you'd have to kiss the moon goodbye. It would be shattered into a million pieces. But if it were to somehow break more or less in two, there would be a chance you wouldn't even know. At least not right away. That's because the asteroid could have split the moon right between the side that always faces Earth and its dark side. You could still see the front of the moon beaming down on you. Eventually, the two halves could escape each other's gravity, revealing two hemispheres in the night sky. And they'd stay like that for a long time. At least until the effects of gravity pulling each half from all sides shape them into similar spheres. But that would take millions, if not billions, of years. If the moon is blown to bits, our night sky would be permanently transformed into a dazzling sea of stars. Venus would become the new brightest object, despite the fact that it's 14,000 times less bright than the moon once was. Some of the more drastic consequences of the moon being destroyed would start to make your life difficult. The moon is responsible for the Earth's 23.4 degree tilt on its axis. Without it, this tilt could become as much as 45 degrees. That would make our planet spin nearly on its side, and this would mean the sun would no longer shine directly over the equator. Instead, it would beam down closer to the north and south poles. This would trigger some extreme weather and could lead to ice ages that occur on different parts of the planet as often as every few thousand years. And the tides would never be the same again. Earth's powerful tides are caused by the moon's gravitational pull on our oceans. The sun's gravitational pull on our sea levels is only about half of what the moon can pull off. No longer having the moon in our orbit would lower sea levels and have a huge effect on ecosystems in intertidal zones. Tidal wetlands species would now have even more fierce competition for food and shelter. This could really endanger a lot of marine life, like sea turtles. The rising and falling of tides is an extremely important factor in giving their offspring the best chance of survival. Since its discovery in 1610 by Galileo, the rings of Saturn have enchanted us for centuries. Remarkably, we've visited Saturn before. Stunning photographs taken from the Cassini space probe have revealed that Saturn's rings are much more complex than you might think. So, what would it be like to actually go in person? How long would it take you to travel to Saturn? What would you see along the way? And could you survive in Saturn's rings? This is What If, and here's what would happen if you jumped into Saturn's rings. On October 15, 1997, NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency banded together to change the history of astronomy. Their mission was to study the Saturn system, a diverse mix of stellar objects made up of rocks, ice, and several moons. Together, they developed the space probe Cassini-Huygens, which was propelled on a seven-year journey to Saturn. Let's imagine we had the technology to bring you, traveler, along for the ride. What kind of adventure are you in for? Well, luckily, we're taking the scenic route. After a year of drifting through space and saying goodbye to Earth, our first stop is Venus. Don't worry, 
This isn't a layover. We're merely visiting the outer edge of Venus's orbit, giving you a gravitational speed boost as you pass by. This will allow you to save on fuel and take in the view of Venus's swirling scenery. After the first orbit, you'll get a nice boost of 7 kilometers per second. But we'll need one more journey around it for the optimal speed boost. This time, we'll be about 600 kilometers from Venus. I hope you have a strong stomach, Traveler, as the gravitational pull might be like that time you ate funnel cake before going on that spinny ride at the fair. Oh, never again. After a quick spin around Venus, you'll be slingshotted towards Mars and Jupiter, but this part of the ride might get a little bumpy, so buckle up. You're about to pass through an asteroid belt. Fortunately, the chances of hitting an asteroid are pretty slim, as they are very spread apart, unlike what you see in the movies. Still, you never know. Just be prepared to take manual control in case your proximity sensors malfunction. Once you've made it through the scary part, it's fairly smooth sailing from here on out. Sit back and admire the view. On your right, in the distance, you'll see the red planet Mars. And on your left is Jupiter. Look! That tiny speck orbiting the gas giant is the Galileo spacecraft. A small yet welcome reminder of home. At this point, it's been almost five years. Wow, how time flies when you're being hurled through space. Saturn is our next stop. But is it safe? We're about to find out. After waiting a couple of years, doing lots of Sudoku, and re-watching all your favorite What If videos, we've finally arrived in orbit of Saturn. Surprisingly, the flat and solid ring structure you've seen in pictures back home were way off. These rings are complex systems of orbits subdivided by several different sections. Each of these rings are separated by gaps made from over 60 of Saturn's moons. The rings are made up of chunks of ice and rock, some as small as little boulders and some as big as houses. These are the remnants of comets, asteroids, meteoroids, and shattered moons torn apart by Saturn's gravity. All right, traveler, it's time for a spacewalk. You probably won't have much success walking on Saturn's rings unless you happen to land on one of its moons, like Metheny, Pelini, or even Titan, which has been considered a potential site for a future space colony. But you'll want to keep your spacesuit on, as Titan is a chilly minus 179.6 degrees Celsius. At this point, you're almost twice the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Now for the moment of truth. The grand finale. As we approach the final rings of Saturn, we'll have to fly through them on a careful trajectory, orbiting Saturn 22 times to get our best travel shots. Here, you'd be only 2,000 kilometers away from Saturn's atmosphere. After about 20 years in space, you'd reach Saturn's interior. Let's be honest, you'd likely disintegrate, but thankfully, you were careful and managed to hang around on Titan instead, leaving the Cassini probe to do the rest of the work. The amount of data Cassini managed to send back to Earth is truly spellbinding, making it one of humankind's greatest success stories in astronomy. An asteroid races toward Earth. It's big, it's fast, and it's about to do a lot of damage. But we're not just going to sit around and wait for the end of days. We're going to fight back. What would happen if we nuked an asteroid? Would it save humanity or make things worse? 
How does a nuclear blast in space compare to a blast on Earth? And would our nukes even be strong enough to destroy it? This is What If, and here's what would happen if we nuked an asteroid. In the year 2175, the asteroid Bennu will pass by Earth, and there's a 1 in 2700 chance that it will hit us. If those sound like good odds to you, think again. Bennu is taller than the Empire State Building, and it's 15 times heavier than the Great Pyramid of Giza. And if it hit the Earth, it would release as much energy as 23 Tsar Bombas, which is the largest hydrogen bomb ever exploded. Do you still like those odds? I'd like them a little more if we had a contingency plan. For NASA, that's the Hypervelocity Asteroid Mitigation Mission for Emergency Response, also known as HAMMER. And just like its name suggests, the plan is to ram into an incoming asteroid or to detonate a nuke that will send it off course. But will it be enough? And what sort of repercussions could we expect? The sooner we discover an asteroid heading our way, the safer we'll be. For example, if we detected an incoming asteroid a year in advance, we'd only have to change its course by a few centimeters to keep it from hitting Earth. To do this, we could detonate a nuclear bomb a few hundred meters away from the asteroid, causing it to change its course and move away from Earth. And if that didn't work, we could just crash into the asteroid with the most powerful bomb we've got. But if anything were to malfunction before the bomb reached the asteroid, the resulting consequences might even be worse than the asteroid hitting Earth. But once the nuke was in space, the world's population would be relatively safe. With no atmosphere out there, only vacuum, the blast would disappear completely but the radiation would be much stronger. While people on Earth would be safe, anyone in any nearby spaceships would be risking their lives. In the interest of preventing as many casualties as possible, this would have to be an automated mission. And assuming that nothing goes wrong and there isn't some kind of AI mutiny, we could very well succeed in pushing an asteroid off course as long as it wasn't too big. A bigger asteroid would require bolder tactics, such as DART. DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. NASA plans to slam into an asteroid in 2022 to change its orbit. The impact would be equal to three tons of TNT. This mission could result in the first ever man-made meteorite shower. And if it works, it will serve as a blueprint of how we could respond to asteroid threats in the future. Of course, when it comes to destroying Bennu, the bomb we'll use will be at least a million times stronger than what DART will be packing. And yes, we've got nukes that are that powerful. The only thing we'd have to look out for, after blowing up a giant asteroid, is space debris. The debris could severely damage our satellites and endanger any astronauts aboard the International Space Station. And if any larger chunks of the asteroid found their way down to Earth, they could create craters up to 20 times their size. On the bright side, if the nuke exploded close enough to Earth, the radiation it emits would be distorted by our planet's magnetic field, which would probably be the prettiest light show you'd ever see. Or if you don't want to wait for a doomsday scenario, you could just take a trip up north to see the northern lights. It's crazy to think that nuking asteroids is a potential survival plan for humanity, but considering it's us against, well, pretty much anything in the infinite void of space, we have to make do with what we have. 
50,000 years ago, a space rock slammed into Earth and made a big boom. This meteorite was only about 50 meters wide, but it weighed a whopping 300,000 tons. When it smashed down into the ground, it flattened everything in the vicinity. It left a crater so lunar-like that astronauts trained there before landing on the moon. Yeah, this is Meteor Crater in Arizona. And there have been many impacts like this one in the long history of Earth. If this meteorite were to slam into New York today, it would destroy most of the city. The impact would leave a crater 1.3 kilometers wide, but the fireball would spread further. Everything within 1.7 kilometers of the impact zone would burn. Even on the outskirts of New York City, the windows would shatter and many people would perish. It would take years to recover from this disaster. But this is nowhere close to the size of some of the largest asteroid impacts Earth has seen. Some of them were so gigantic that if they smashed into us today, they would cause our extinction. Most of these asteroids crashed when Earth was very young. Well, at least in planetary years. Some 2.2 billion years ago, a pretty big asteroid made its way down to Earth, where Australia is now. It left the oldest confirmed crater on our planet. Yarrabubba Crater doesn't look like much today, but when it made its fatal landing, it shook the planet quite a lot. Yarrabubba scarred the continent with a crater 70 kilometers wide. It wiped out everything in its way with a massive shockwave. Scientists even think it helped end the ice age that Earth was going through by creating so much vapor that it changed the climate. Now, imagine this giant landing on Earth today. If it hit Australia again and left a 70-kilometer crater there, the fireball would spread for 130 kilometers in all directions. If it set a course for New York, it would decimate the entire city. Even on the outskirts, everything would be on fire, and you'd get third-degree burns. But things could get so much worse if an asteroid even larger than that hit us. Like the one that crashed into Earth 1.8 billion years ago. This giant comet punctured the ground and shattered the rock. It left a crater 130 kilometers wide, where Canada is today. We call this crater Sudbury Basin, and it's one of the largest asteroid impacts Earth has seen in its history. 1.8 billion years ago was a violent time for our planet. The atmosphere was changing and continents were on the move, shaking and rupturing the land on their way. Massive asteroid collisions were part of a regular day back then. Now, if this comet hit us today, it would be a total doomsday scenario. Yeah, if the Sudbury Basin impactor landed on New York City today, well, there wouldn't be a New York City. It would feel like being caught in an earthquake that measured an 11 on the Richter scale. Everything would be shaking from this immense and loud shock wave and everything 300 kilometers from the impact would instantly ignite. This is what the impact would look like if it landed in France. Yeah, there's no chance you're surviving this, and we haven't even got to the biggest impact yet. It's time for the dinosaur wiping asteroid. 65 million years ago, an asteroid at least 10 kilometers wide smashed into Earth where Mexico is now and violently ended the era of giant reptiles. Now, imagine that same impact today and, well, yeah, it would be incredibly violent. The asteroid would leave a crater 180 kilometers wide and the fireball, well, the fireball would burn everything in a 450-kilometer radius. If this asteroid hit New York, its effects would spread as far as Canada. 
and the impact would be so painfully loud that it would deafen you. You wouldn't just hear it, you'd feel violent vibrations in your entire body. And if this big space rock doubled down on Mexico, well, much of the country would see the same fate the region saw when the dinosaurs died. Enormous shock waves would cause widespread destruction hundreds of kilometers beyond the impact site. And just like 65 million years ago, the impact would cause a massive tsunami. Okay, it's bad, really bad, but let's finally get to our number one largest impact in history. Cue the Vredefort asteroid, the largest, almost the oldest, and the most terrifying space event on our planet's record. Two billion years ago, a gigantic asteroid slammed into where South Africa is today. It obliterated everything. It likely changed the Earth's climate. And it most definitely killed whatever lived here before the dinosaurs. This same impact today would bring enormous death and destruction. This deadly space rock would obliterate everything for hundreds of kilometers. The crater from the impactor would be as wide as 300 kilometers, and the fireball would spread for 750 kilometers in all directions. Intense shock waves would rush across the continent. Add to this tsunamis, earthquakes, and wildfires, and this would be a horrifying disaster. Nothing in the area could survive this. But what's worse, is that the disaster wouldn't end there. All the debris, dust, and gases from the impact would block the sunlight and pollute the atmosphere. We'd be like the dinosaurs during their last days. Temperatures would plummet. The sudden climate change would cause a massive extinction event. Earth would become a pretty barren place. And humanity might not be able to come back from this planet. To figure out what life would be like on a tiny house-sized planet, you'd have to find one first. But the smallest planet we've discovered so far, Kepler-37b, is still about the size of our moon. So maybe you're better off looking at an asteroid instead. They're not technically planets, but they can be as small as 10 meters wide, so they fit the physical properties you're looking for. But there are a lot of asteroids out there, so how do you pick the best one to live on? It has something called an escape velocity, which refers to the minimum speed an object must have to escape its gravitational field. On a planet this size, the escape velocity would be 5 meters per second. That means you could technically leave the planet by getting a running start and leaping off a ramp. Then, you'd be floating off into space. 
Pi Pi. But assuming you're not going to try that, you're going to be here for a while and you should probably start figuring out how to survive. The first thing to worry about is where are you getting your food? Well, I hope you like veggies because any meat is pretty much out of the question. Not only would you have to bring some livestock along with you through space successfully, you'd also have to find enough room to keep them and grow food for them. And you don't have much room to begin with. For the vegetarian option, you could bring something similar to what NASA uses on the International Space Station. It's called the Vegetable Production System, and it's a garden that's about the size of a piece of carry-on luggage that can hold six plants. It's specifically designed to grow plants and vegetables in microgravity conditions. No, you wouldn't have the most exciting menu on your rocky retreat, but at least it would keep you alive. Now, before you go trying to figure out anything else, there's something you might want to see. A 2019 study published in the Astrophysical Journal states that any planet smaller than 2.7% of Earth's mass would lose its atmosphere and any liquid water it might have due to a lack of gravitational force. Well, even 2.7% of Earth's mass is still double the mass of the Moon, so your tiny planet would be without those two major components for sustaining life. If your planet can't hold an atmosphere, then you wouldn't be able to breathe, and you wouldn't have protection from the harmful radiation of space. So maybe buying yourself a tiny planet wouldn't be such a great idea after all. What if this football field-sized space rock didn't make that turn? What if it kept moving towards us? Would it disintegrate in our atmosphere? If not, how much time would we have to get out of the danger zone? And just how big would that danger zone be? Could our planet have any chance of surviving the collision? This is what if, and here's what would happen if an asteroid hit the Earth. Asteroids are hitting the Earth all the time. Every day, space bombards us with about 100 tons of dust and sand. Car-sized asteroids make it to our atmosphere about once a year. They burn up in the mesosphere, never reaching Earth's surface. The massive 10-kilometer-wide, life-threatening rocks, like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs, don't come by too often, maybe once every few million years. The ones we do have to worry about are asteroids the size of a football field that actually make it to Earth's surface. Meteorites. They tend to come down to Earth every 2,000 years. What if one of those was to hit us tonight? The extent of an asteroid's devastation to our planet all comes down to where it lands. Just 3% of Earth's surface is populated. That means, in all likelihood, 97 asteroids out of 100 would just plunge into the ocean or flatten an uninhabited forest somewhere in Siberia or northern Canada. But 3 out of 100 asteroids would strike a populated city. Imagine seeing a 100-meter-long rock speeding towards you, traveling at 30 kilometers per second. From the moment it passed unharmed through the mesosphere, it would take less than three seconds to crash down to Earth. For a city like New York, that would mean over two and a half million casualties. A huge fireball would destroy everything in a three-kilometer radius and cause heavy damage to buildings within a seven-kilometer radius. Maybe it's not all bad. Ever hear of the meteorite that slammed into the Russian city of Chelyabinsk? That rock exploded with the force of 20 Hiroshima bombs and caused around $33 million worth of damage. Well, in our scenario, the meteorite is five times bigger. The freshly fallen space rock may pose the risk of widespread radiation if it were made up of radioactive heavy metals. Of course, it wouldn't be as bad as a 10-kilometer wide asteroid hitting the Earth. In that case, the shock wave would be enough to wipe out a good chunk of humanity right away. The Earth would get a new crater over 100 kilometers across, and a ring of asteroid debris would give us a Saturn-like appearance. Most of this debris would rain back down on Earth, setting cities and forests on fire, and cooking everything that's not protected. You might want to invest in an underground bunker before this happens.
because on the surface it will be very, very dusty. All this dust and smoke would block the sunlight. Without the sun, all plants and a lot of animals would die out. After about a year, the atmosphere would clear up, but there would be very little food left for humans. And if we weren't resourceful enough, this would be the end of our race. We would suffer the same fate as the dinosaurs did 65 million years ago. The good thing is, we have the atmosphere to protect us from most asteroids, and NASA to keep an eye on all the space rocks flying around us. Bad thing is, it's sometimes hard to detect the incoming rock until it's too late. Tell us what you think. Are you preparing for a sudden blast from space? Whoa, watch your head. Some seriously big asteroids are crashing into Earth. What kind of shapes and sizes do they have? Which ones would have the deadliest impact? And which one would be most likely 